Hey, how's everybody doing? Hey, I just did the uh, R clone video, kind of did it backwards, but right now we're going to go ahead and do the Plex Drive video. Uh, just to let you know, this is admin from uh, plexguide.com. So uh, we were following instructions earlier for R clone, so we're going to be doing the same thing with Plex Drive. Um, I did the encrypted version just to make sure that everything is working. So, you know, there's all my team hard at work, and there she is working hard for this whole encryption piece. Uh, let's see, let's see. So we're gonna go to the wikis and we're gonna go to Plex Drive. And again, normally you follow the order on the front. So you wouldn't follow it like this. There we go, Plex Drive 4 configuration. So this shouldn't take long because I, I, this is a dummy account um, and uh, to scan it wouldn't take long. And I may have to do a reboot in between. Okay, so um, as I said earlier, I think, but uh, yeah, make sure you subscribe, like our videos, help build our community. Sorry, just a little bit drained. Um, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start up Plex Guide. And as I mentioned earlier with our clone, if you're using terminal, um, if you're using terminal, it's a lot easier to use it when you're using Mac or, or a, a Linux system. And the reason for it is, is because uh, copying and pasting stuff works fairly easily. Um, if you have a Windows PC, beware when you right click into the terminal window, it may duplicate copy on you. Uh, you may have issues, so make sure you research the correct keys. Again, it's like control plus W, I don't know, something, something like that. But I just wanna make sure you're aware so you're not going crazy. And remember these programs that you're using are the, their programs, so we just incorporated it in. Okay, so you're gonna do Plex Drive install. For any reasons, if you mess up your Plex Drive install, make sure to remove the Plex Drive tokens. All it basically does is it goes to the right directory, just deletes it, and then you just go through the Plex Drive install again. So we try to make your life a little easy. Now, the biggest thing here is you need to reboot this system after you install Plex Drive because we have a lot of people who forget to do this, and I don't know, they open up another terminal window or break this one and then they're deploying everything and they're saying, hey, my radar is not scanning, this is not working. I'm like, hey, did you reboot your computer? Because in instructions we put it, here we put it. You know, I don't know what else to do. I don't know, maybe a jumping clown, JPEG jumping at you, I don't know. But just make sure you reboot your system afterwards. And the reason for it is, is because once the program is done, it, it's running. So if you try to stop it, um, you're gonna have problems now in theory you could open up another terminal window and just let it you know Start doing your things, but you don't want to do that because if you actually close out the first one Everything will stop working. You don't want that to happen. So make sure you reboot your system. So we're gonna go ahead and install it So you see Anzabel kicking in so it's checking to see if you have any prior installs Come on so while it's doing that I had the console up earlier. Let's see if I have it still. No, that's Google Drive. If not, I just have to go back to it again. Uh, it's not difficult. Okay, console, hopefully it's in a cache. There we go, perfect. So you need to have your API secret and your client ID. Oh, okay, so we got it right here. Okay, we don't have to worry about this. So it looks like it's installing Plex Drive still. So this is gonna take a hot minute. And sometimes this can run slow because it's, it's just dependent on the speeds of how fast Plex Drive is downloading. So we're gonna. While this is going on, we can just talk about a few other things here. So um, what Plex Drive does is it, it's basically written by an awesome guy, I believe he's in Germany. Let's see, Plex Drive. So there's a version four and a version five. The reason we stuck with version four is because it's it's more consistent and steady and utilizes your disk for caching. Um, obviously we recommend solid state disk. Um, he did come out with Plex Drive five. There's a few people who reported that they had no issues with Plex Drive 5 and uh, that it works well. So, um, you know, like I said, it's your, it's your pick, but in ours we have Plex Drive 4. Plex Drive 5 you just uses a lot of RAM. Um, a lot of your people have VPS systems that only run, um, you know, like one gig of RAM. So uh, 
Give me one second here. So control C. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this again. Yes. I don't know what the hell it's about. Good times, huh? Like I said, this video is just done off the whim. So I'm gonna go to Plex Guide. I'm just checking the coding. It's gotta be something on their end. Plex Guide Wiki. I'm gonna go ahead and pause this video until it finishes. Okay, yeah, it, it just got stuck. Uh, it took about two minutes to download, so it's working. Um, nothing, again, it's nothing on our end. It's just a matter of downloading it from GitHub. Okay, so I appreciate your patience. So we're gonna go ahead and enter that ID here. Let's see. So I'm a little forgetful today. So here is the client ID. I'm gonna go ahead and pop that in. And then the client secret. And like I said, it's very easy to do on a Mac or Linux machine because terminal works perfectly. So here's the authorization code. And again, if you're on a system locally, uh, it usually pops up with Windows and, and it makes your life a little easy too. But again, if you're using Windows and you're doing a remote, it's gonna be a little bit of a pain. Okay, it's gonna ask to confirm your account, which it does. So hit allow. And then we're gonna go ahead and copy and paste this in here, the authorization code. And then this should be very short because there's barely nothing there. So you see how it says first bill finished? So you can restart it. The way you can easily restart is press control C. I believe I put it in instructions too. And then from there, um, you'll be able to go ahead and reboot or you just reboot your machine to, you know, if you got a button to push. So I'm gonna type sudo reboot. We're going to wait for this system to come back up. So let's give that a second. So let's say somebody here is having ambi issues. You know, this version three developer crashes a little bit. And again, the way we accomplish this is using the Hertzner cloud, which is awesome for development purposes. You see a little bit of the little bit I need to accomplish this with a dedicated IP address. And you can change these out too, which is a good thing. Um, let's see. So let's see if it came back up yet. Yep, that was pretty quick. There's not really much on there anyways, so it shouldn't be that bad. Alrighty, so we're here now. So let's see if Plex Drive worked. And look at that, it worked. Um, so if, if this didn't come back with anything, yeah, it, it means it just, it just failed on us. So it's good to put something in your Plex drive. Um, let me see if union FS is work. Uh, union FS is working. CD mount union FS. If the cat is there, that is good. Okay. So sudo Plex guide. Let me just go to because I know we did this a little backwards. Our clone encrypted. We already set it up. I'm just making sure that all services are running. Come on, come on. Everything's deciding to test me today. Okay, and it finished. It took about 20 additional seconds, just pause it in case. So again, I don't know if it's the low specs or if it's just the internet being slow on their end. Okay, so it seemed like it finished. So let's check again, hopefully this works. CD mount union FS directory, there we go. So I maybe need to change up the order. So probably our clone needs to be installed first in Plex Drive. I think so because somebody else had an issue where stuff wasn't coming up. Okay, so we know that everything is working here. 
um, because we have cat5. So if I go to, um, if I want to test this out, I'm going to type uh, touch cat6 txt. So right now, you see this here. It looks like it's working, it kind of is, but this should disappear and turn into some encrypted garbage. Right now is because we have the encrypted R clone installed. So the way I can force it is typing sudo system ctl restart move en because again, we are running the encrypted version of R clone. So in about 30 seconds, we should see that disappear. So status move en. So right now it says sleep 30. We purposely put a, a 30 second sleep. So when your system starts up, it's not moving it right away. Okay. But when it works, we should see that cat disappear and, and some encrypted garbage starts sh showing up. And that is a long, there we go. Okay, it looks like something's happening. See, so now we should see it disappear, see? And the reason it disappeared is because um, we're running the encrypted version. If we had the unencrypted version, cat six would still sit right there, you know, where you want it to be. But that means it shows you that the encryption is working. So, and you see what just showed up? So it's right now 4 or 9 p.m. and that just showed up automatically. So that is that exact file. So, mount union fs yeah okay so obviously that shows you that the encryption piece is working um I'm trying to think if anything else but now that's pretty much it for plex drive so if i want to check on plex drive to sudo system ctl status plex drive four it says dead uh nope okay it's active because i know she has encrypted services running so it shows you our plex drive is good to go but other than that <coughs> this was just a quick and fast video sorry for being a little bit uh, all over the place i just wanted to get something out for you kind of talk things through um again just make sure you subscribe like the video you know help build our community come to our site participate in our forms, you know, all that good stuff makes uh, life easy for us. And um, yeah, I'm going to make one more video just kind of detailing how data moves simply. Thank you for your time. Bye.